Let's take a look at one final main point, main conclusion question before moving on to a different topic. And this question will serve as a nice summary, nice review of some of the concepts that we've covered. Now, the first thing you might notice about the geographer's claims um, is that, well, there are just a lot of words, right? It's pretty long. So don't be scared off by that. It's often the case that a stimulus like this, that's just really long, um, its bark is worse than its bite, meaning this is like the length of it is, I think, the scariest part up about this. But if you get over that hurdle, I think you'll find that this is actually not too challenging, especially when you um, apply the concepts of uh, context versus argument identification and referential phrasing. Right, I think just those two concepts alone reveal what the answer is. Okay, so let's take a look at the geographer's claims. Because tropical storms require heat and moisture, they form especially over ocean surfaces of at least this temperature, uh, ocean temperatures that global warming would encourage. Okay, so for this reason, referential phrase, many early discussions of global warming predicted that it would cause more frequent and intense tropical storms. Right, so another referential phrase, but recent research shows that this prediction, referential phrase, is unlikely to be borne out. Other factors, such as instabilities and wind flow, are likely to counteract global warming's effects on tropical storm development. Okay, so context versus conclusion first. Notice this word but. It's operating in the same way that, or it's operating in the expected way of separating out context here from our author's argument. And within the context, you notice there's some other people's argument, right? Like, it's not clear who these other people are, but the geographer just references them by saying many early discussions. Well, who are having these? Some people are having these discussions, but whoever they are, that's their argument. Oh, because of this, we make the prediction that uh, global warming would cause more frequent and intense tropical storms. Okay, so other people's argument. Now, within the context of this argument, it's already happening. Our geographer says, wait, hold on a second, but... Here's the argument I want to make. Now, where's the conclusion? Where's the premise? The conclusion is this. Recent research shows that this prediction is unlikely to be borne out. Why? Why should I believe that the prediction is unlikely to be borne out? Because, right, because of this, because there are other factors that, will, that are likely to counteract global warming's effects on tropical storm development, right? So there's your premise, conclusion, structure, there's your argument. Now, again, at this point, you know, from a purely efficiency point of view perspective, you just want to dive right into the answers and find the answer choice that best paraphrases uh, this claim. But here, I want to use this opportunity to review referential phrasing, because the conclusion claim cannot be understood evaluate the referential phrase in the claim, right? Look, the conclusion just says this prediction or recent research shows that this prediction is unlikely to be worn, borne out. You have to unpack this, otherwise you don't understand what this claim is saying. So what prediction is unlikely to be borne out? In other words, where do we point this arrow? Right here, you see the word predicted. The prediction that it would cause more frequent intense tropical storms. See, now we have a better understanding of what prediction is unlikely to be borne out. The prediction that it would cause more frequent and intense tropical storms is unlikely to be borne out, meaning it's not likely that whatever this it is is going to cause more frequent and intense tropical storms. Now, I said whatever this it is because embedded in the referent of this referential phrase is another referential phrase, right? It's embedded. It's nested. This referential phrase points to this whole thing, but within this whole thing, it itself contains a referential phrase, which points to what? Global warming, right? That's the it. So fully unpacked, right? You got to take this global warming, substitute it for the word it, right? Now this claim says global warming. The prediction is that global warming would cause more frequent intense tropical storms. Now you can take that whole claim, substitute it in for this prediction. Fully fleshed out, it says global warming cause more frequent and intense tropical storms, we're saying of this thing, unlikely. This is the fully fleshed out version of what the conclusion actually says. And it had to do, you know, we had to unpack two layers of referential phrasing. Right now, there's this one other referential phrase that I didn't, I didn't talk about because it's part of the uh, other people's argument, but it, it's 
a good exercise nonetheless to unpack this. What is this reason? Well, everything that they just talked about, how tropical storms form, right? What, how do tropical storms, well, they form, they, they need heat and moisture, right? And conditions that are conducive to tropical storm forming is over ocean surfaces of at least 26 degrees Celsius. What's so special about that temperature? Well, that's a temperature that global warming encourages. So for all those reasons, you see, early discussions of global warming predict that global warming would cause more frequent intense tropical storms. And it kind of makes sense. If, I mean, this is the, if this is the narrow view that's taken, right? If these are all the, the only factors that we consider, then the prediction makes a lot of sense. Now, our geographer widens our view, right? Expands our horizons, tells us to consider other things. Hey, don't consider just these factors, moisture and heat. Also consider other factors, like for example, instabilities and wind flow, right? Instabilities and wind flow, these other factors actually counteract global warming's effect. So this prediction, right, this prediction is, right, this prediction here is unlikely to be borne out. That's the conclusion. All right, once again, to amp up the difficulty, we're gonna consider the answer choices one by one. First, we'll look at A. Tropical storms are especially likely to form over warm ocean surfaces. Okay clearly not the right answer because it's not even close to what the conclusion is saying right where is answer choice a though a is present somewhere in the stimulus right it's present in the context right the they here another referential phrase tropical storms form especially over ocean surfaces at least 20 there it is tropical storms especially likely form over warm ocean surfaces how about b which says contrary to early discussions global warming is not the only factor affecting the frequency and intensity of tropical storms. This sounds good, right? Because that does sound like what we're saying. The recent research, in fact, revealed other factors. So global warming is not the only factor, namely other factors like instabilities in wind flow. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it is true in the same way that A is true. Like, it's not this part, at least not in this part of the answer, it's not misrepresenting anything we encountered in the stimulus. But that doesn't mean it's answering the question of what is the conclusion, right? So again, once you've identified what the conclusion is in a main point, main conclusion question, you, as best as you can, actually try to forget what the other stuff is precisely to avoid, to sidestep these baits that are being laid out, right? B wants you to like connect it to this last bit. Not good. That's not the conclusion, okay? So uh, one other thing I want to point out about B is that if you consider the first four words, it actually is now misrepresenting the information in the stimulus, right? It says contrary to early discussions, global warming is not the only factor. This implies that in the early discussions, they thought global warming was the only factor. That's not true. Or at minimum, we don't know whether that's true. What we do know is that in the early discussions, surely they considered global warming as a factor in the frequency and intensity of tropical storms. Did they, in these early discussions, assume it was the only factor? It's not clear. Perhaps they, even in those early discussions, considered other factors like instabilities and wind flow. It's just that the data back then showed that instabilities and wind flow wouldn't be strong enough to counteract global warming's effects, right? And now more recent research shows that actually, wait, those other factors like instabilities are strong enough to counteract global warming's effects. So the fact that the early discussions mentioned global warming and mentioned that global warming caused more frequent and intense tropical storms doesn't mean that they didn't consider other factors. Granted, the point I'm making here is really minor, right? You want to get rid of B not, I mean, not really for that reason. You want to get rid of B because it just doesn't match what the conclusion is saying. But I make this small point about B because this is the kind of uh, analysis, this is a level of granularity that other questions, harder questions, much harder questions turn on. How about C? If global warming were reversed, tropical storms would be less frequent and intense. Now, some of you might be like, okay, this is obviously wrong for the reasons that we had covered previously. Our conclusion is not a hypothetical, it's not a conditional claim, it's just a factual claim. Right? We are just making this claim that right now, given the evidence that we have, we can make a prediction that uh, it's unlikely that global warming would cause more frequent and intense uh, tropical storms. 
versus answer choice C is a conditional claim, is a hypothetical claim. If something something were the case, then something else would be the case. At just at the highest level, it doesn't match, so we can get rid of it. Good, right? Good. If you eliminate C for that reason, very good. Now, if you felt attracted to C, I want to, I want to know if you, upon reading answer choice C, started to conjure up a world in which global warming were reversed. Right, because that's C's objective. That's what C is trying to get you to do. Like, kind of forget about,、uh, you know, forget about the question stem. Just like, hey, let's、uh, let's play an imagination game. Like, hypothetically, let's say we were able to reverse global warming. Wouldn't that mean in that world where global warming were reversed, in that world, tropical storms would be less frequent and less intense? Right. So you start thinking, well, is that true? You know,、uh, let's see. How do tropical storms form? They require heat. But if it's cooler, then maybe they wouldn't form as frequent. Yeah. You're already chasing a decoy, right? Like none of those considerations matter. You're, you're just trying to find the best paraphrasing of the conclusion. But you see, I mean, if C was successful in getting you to think those thoughts, you need to be aware of that, right? Because this test, in a large measure, is a game of psychology. The test writers are really, really good at manipulating your psychology, right? So they're they're like getting you to be distracted. To start thinking about X, Y, and Z, where they laid out like your task is to focus on this thing. Let's see if I can distract you. And D is a trap that we've seen before. Instabilities in wind flow will negate the effects of global warming and the formation of tropical storms. You know what trap this is, right? It's the trap of oh, just toss in whatever the last bit of language present in the stimulus as a,、uh, a wrong answer choice, and that's that's just what D is. D is part of the premise. It's not the conclusion. Which leaves us with answer choice E, and of course, this has to be the right answer. Global warming probably will not produce more frequent and intense tropical storms. Yes, very good. Notice the level of certainty present in the answer choice matches the level of certainty present in the、uh, in the conclusion. We're not saying it's guaranteed that global warming won't cause more frequent and intense tropical storms. We're saying that it's unlikely that global warming will cause more frequent and intense storms. So that's what E mirrors global warming. Probably will not produce more frequent and intense tropical storms. Now, this is really important, okay? Because if answer choice E were present like this, E would be the wrong answer choice. And I'm pointing this out again because it's not present in question 14, right? They didn't employ this trap, but they will, okay? They will. In fact, we've seen a version of this in one of the previous questions where we had a comparative statement, and the answer choice didn't respect. The relative nature of comparative statements gave us an absolute claim. That's very similar to what E could have done, right? E could have been a trap answer choice that, instead of respecting the hedging that was present in the conclusion, just gave us a, a version that was too strong. And if it did that, it would just be the wrong answer.